poke that subscribe button for more. To clear it right up, you have something that looks like this. You have a budgie, which is the common term for a budgirigar, a small Australian parakeet. A parakeet is a parrot with a long tail and a slender body. There are hundreds of types of parakeets and budgies are just one of them. So look at you go. In one new friend, you have a budgie, a parakeet, and a parrot. Where it got twisted is that if you're in America, you've probably only seen these little guys referred to as parakeets or, for certain color mutations, fancy parakeets. When they first started selling budgies in America, or so the lore goes, the admin sat around a table and said, we can't possibly sell something called Bargirigar to American families. They will never be able to pronounce it, let alone understand what that is. Then they asked themselves if there was any other name that they could call it and realized that it's also a parakeet. Patting themselves on the back, they decided that budgies would be known as parakeets and any other parakeet would just have to pick another name or a modifier. This is how we came to have our little misnomered babies. <music> Using color to identify sex. The Sarah is a fleshy covering which is located directly above its beak. The budgie's nostrils are found on the Sera. They look like two in-depth holes, making the Sera easy to find. While most budgie's beaks are a yellowish color, the Sera is a certain color depending on the bird's sex. Most male budgies in the breeding mood have a bright or royal blue Sera. Sometimes, the vibrant color can appear purple-blue. This color will lighten when the budgie is not in the breeding mood. If you've identified your budgie as male and notice his Sera turn brown, he may have a medical condition. A female adult budgie's Sera is usually a white or pale blue. As she becomes more fertile and ready to produce eggs, the Sera will become a darker tan or brownish in color. If the budgie is fertile and ready to breed, you may also notice the Sera thicken and become crusty. The Sera buildup can be about a centimeter thick. Consider the age of your budgie. If your budgie is less than four months old, it will have immature colors respective to their sex. Before this time, the colored area that shows sex will be pink or purple on a male and white or pale blue on a female. If your budgie hasn't had its first molt, has dark button eyes, and has bars coming from its head to Sarah, then it's less than four months old. If your budgie is immature or less than four months old, the Sera on males will slowly turn deep blue and females will keep white or pale blue before showing tan. You can find budgies for sale online in want ads or in pet stores. You can also get one from your local animal shelter. Wherever you get your budgie from, make sure the seller has healthy and humanely treated birds. Look at online reviews for the sellers you find. Are most buyers satisfied with the birds that they purchase from the seller? If you have a friend that has budgies, ask them where you can get good birds. This is especially helpful if they got their bird or birds recently. Does the space feel clean and well cared for? Do you think the people working at the store or the person selling the birds feels responsible and invested in the health and happiness of the birds? Make sure they are cleaning the birds' cages regularly. Do the birds have water? Do the birds have appropriate food, such as seed, pellets, and vegetables? These are all important things to assess before moving forward with purchasing a budgie. Consider whether the birds look healthy and happy. Are the birds interacting with one another? Look at the head, body, and legs of each bird you are considering. Mm -hmm. 
If it is healthy and happy, its feathers should be smooth and shiny, not all puffed up. It should have a healthy appetite, so you should see it eating seed. Its beak and feet should not be crusted. Its vents should be clear and it should not have any nasal discharge. The feathers should have an appearance that is shiny, sleek, and smooth. The budgie should not have any growths or abnormalities. The budgie's feet should be clear of mites and its toes should be clean and smooth. If it is healthy and happy, then it should be active and seem happy. Does it move around, eat seed, and drink water? While a budgie should be relatively calm when left alone, it is natural for a budgie to tighten its feathers when you come near its cage, so don't read that behavior negatively. Usually the budgies from pet shops are not hand tamed, which means that you will have to be willing to take the time to help it get accustomed to your hand, if you want to be able to hold it. Budgies are flock creatures, and their entire world is their flock. A budgie without a flock is an incomplete, lonely budgie. A pair of budgies will, generally, be happier than a single budgie. Single budgies can and do become extraordinary pets. Give time, and he will tame himself and come to you, because budgies are driven instinctually to seek out others to form social relationships with other living beings. In this case, you will become your budgie's flock. They are very social little ones and need more than an hour or two of attention to really be happy. Many budgies that really have needed more company than they have will become obsessed with different toys and objects in their cage, constantly contact calling or other behavioral problems. Getting two budgies or adding another bird is a smart move if you are at work all day or away a lot and cannot interact with your budgie as much as you used to. A fulfilled budgie is what you naturally want. Two budgies bought at the same time will almost never learn to talk. It is true that two budgies will look to each other for companionship, but they not only can bond to each other, but to the owner as well. That is, if the owner pays attention to them and works with them and the birds trust him or her. The lifespan depends on breed, lineage, and health being highly influenced by exercise and diet. Budgies generally live between 5 and 8 years in the wild, but commonly make it to somewhere between 10 and 15 in captivity. One exceptional specimen clocked up over 29 years. There are many factors that can affect the lifespan of a budgie. Overweight and the lack of movement make their inner organs become too fatty, which leads to failures of the bird's organs. American budgies generally live longer than English budgies, and breeding budgies often have shorter lives than those who never raise chicks. The budgie diet you choose should be based on what they would naturally eat. The closer to natural that you can get to their diet, the better off they will be. They will have less trouble absorbing nutrients and will be able to deal with the wastes more efficiently than if they were trying to deal with something completely alien to their digestive system. Mass-produced dry seed parakeet food should constitute no more than about 20% of your budgie's diet. If offered dry seeds as a free choice diet component, budgies and other parrots will usually eat it to the exclusion of everything else offered. In other words, don't put a dish of just dry seeds in your bird's cage and expect them to eat their vegetables too. For optimal health, organic fruits and vegetables form a very important part of your budgie's diet. Vegetables are best fed raw. 
for the biggest nutritional punch, focus mostly on dark green or yellow leafy vegetables should be offered daily. Try fruits and vegetables such as apples, pumpkin, grapes, carrot, parsley, broccoli, mango, sweet potato, squash, and spinach. Feed the fruits and vegetables to your budgie raw because cooking takes away vital nutrients. Provide a cuddle bone and a mineral block. Cuddle bones and mineral blocks are necessities for your budgie. They contain necessary minerals and nutrients that your bird might not get other places. The cuddle bone should be placed in the cage so the soft side faces the bird so he can scrape off the bone. From the moment you add a female budgie to your home, your male budgies might turn into the worst enemies and they can start fighting over the attention of the female bird. There always has to be a certain balance within the flock. As a consequence, you would need two female budgies for two male budgies. Make sure that your male budgies have enough food and space in the cage. They don't always like to share their belongings. Make sure that the budgies are properly introduced to each other first. Some birds are more territorial than others, so it's best to keep both budgies in a separate cage for a while so they can get to know each other between the bars before you put them together. Unless they're trying to bite each other through the bars, it should be safe to put them together. The younger your birds are, the bigger the chances of them getting along. Choose a cage that is the right size for your budgie and position it in a location free from hazards. You definitely don't want your budgie to be cramped in a cage that is too small. Choose a cage that is at least twice as tall and twice as wide as the wingspan of your bird. Get the most spacious cage possible that will fit well into your home. Budgies need both vertical height and width for hopping and flying. The minimum size for a single budgie would be 18 by 18 by 18 inches or 46 by 46 by 46 centimeters. Please consider carefully the size you get as it will determine how active your budgie can be and this will affect the health and happiness of your bird. Don't go with the first cage you see at the pet store. Firstly, establish which cages are designed for budgies. There are some good looking cages for larger birds or for rodents which may or may not be safe for your bird. So start with the ones that are specifically for budgies and go from there. Do not buy a circular cage as a budgie cannot stretch its wings and fly properly in one. The bird will also feel insecure and scared as it has no corners to hide in. Your budgie's cage needs to be large enough that your little guy can spread his wings out completely without hitting the sides of the cage, toys, or perches. Bird cages are generally made out of wire, metal, or stainless steel. Some cages may rust or lose their finish over time. So choose stainless steel if you want something that will last for years. Test a few cages and look for one that you can clean easily. Can your hand enter the cage easily? Can you use a brush inside it? Thank you.
Bird baths are made of plastic, usually transparent, and can be attached to the outside of the cage and can be filled with a small layer of water. Don't put in too much water. A thin layer of approximately one half inch or one to one half centimeter of water is plenty. It's a great deal of fun watching budgies splashing around. A bath encourages your bird to preen and it also helps remove dirt and other debris from your bird's feathers. Most budgies love taking a bath. Fill a shallow bowl with lukewarm water. Water should only be an inch or two deep. It shouldn't be too cold as budgies are susceptible to cold. You can also find baths that attach to the side of your bird's cage. If you find your bird doesn't like the bowl of water, you can also try wet grass or greens at the bottom of a clean cage. Your bird will enjoy rolling in them as a way of bathing. You do not need to use soap. Put a towel under the cage if you're worried about water splashing out. Set a towel under the cage. It will help catch the splashing. Place the bowl in the bottom of the cage. Set the bath in the bottom where your budgie can jump in. Make sure it's on a level surface. If you prefer, you can also fill up your sink with a small amount of water. Take the budgie in there and close the door so she can't fly away. However, make sure your sink is clean first. Let the budgie play. Budgies will splash and flutter in the water. The splashing is the budgie giving themselves a bath. Most budgies enjoy this process immensely. If your budgie doesn't jump in immediately, give her a chance to get used to it. Let your bird dry off. Your bird will shake herself to get the water off. However, make sure that the area that they are drying off in isn't breezy or cool. You might want to cover his or her cage with a towel to help. They cool themselves by rapid breathing with their mouths open and by holding their wings out slightly from their bodies. The underneath of a bird's wings has no feathers and the main wing artery is in that region. If a bird is running a fever or is suffering from heat stress, this area will feel very hot to the touch. Bare feet, which may sound silly, but it also contributes to heat loss. Otherwise, budgies are very hardy little creatures and basically do the same things humans do when they try to stay cool. Keep their activity level down compared to regular days when the air is cooler. Sleep slash take naps, hide in the trees when it's too warm during the day, panting, just like dogs, budgies also pant to dissipate heat. Bathing, of course, helps to cool their bodies down. It also keeps their feathers clean. When a cool breeze provides some relief from the heat, budgies may puff out their feathers or flutter their wings to let the circulating air reach their hot skin. Survive no matter how hot it gets. Avoid sitting a birdcage next to a window or in direct sunlight as this will only make the heat from outside worse. Like all animals, birds require fresh water that is changed daily However, on hot days, the water can easily become warm. Birds just won't drink warm water and will not be able to rehydrate themselves. Change the water a couple of times in the day so that it is always cool. Birds do not need as much energy in summer as they do in winter. But in addition to their normal pellet or seed mixes, will enjoy greens and fruits, which can be left for them in a shallow dish of water. Fresh food should not be left longer than an hour or two in a cage on hot days as bacteria will begin to grow quickly. Watch next. Budgie morning noise. Or the best pet bird for your kids. 